Hey guys, welcome to another video in this Flutter game development series where we are creating a 2D space shooter called Space Escape using Flame Engine. In the last video, we had an ability to fire bullets at enemies. And when a bullet and enemy collides, we remove both of them from the game world. All this is working perfectly fine. But in this video, we are going to modify that code a little. This is because recently, when I was going through the latest documentation of Flame Engine, I came across a section on collision detection topic. I would highly recommend you to go through this topic. Basically, Flame provides a mechanism to handle collision detection for simple cases without having to use Force 2D. For this, we'll just have to use the hitbox and collidable mixins. But before we get started with that, I'll quickly upgrade my Flame package to the latest release candidate 9. There are two reasons behind this. First is that I want this series to remain as close as possible to 1.0 release of Flame. And second reason is that in RC9, some changes were made to position component which have introduced a bug in this game. Let me show you that bug by launching the game. Here, if I tap on the screen, the desired output is to spawn a bullet which travels upwards. But in RC9, when I tap on the screen, the player's spaceship starts moving upwards. This happens because in RC9, the position property of position component is made final. Which means in game.dart, in the onTapDown method, when we set the position property of bullet to this.player.position, it actually uses the same position object as used by the player. So when we change the position of bullet in its update method, it also gets applied to the player component. So to fix this, we'll just have to create a new object from player's position. This can be done by using the dot clone method. And now if I hot restart the app and try to fire a bullet again, you can see that it is working as expected. Now that this issue is out of the way, let's focus on the collision detection part. So the way this collision detection works is, we attach a 2D shape to each component that we want to take part in collision detection. These shapes are called hitboxes. And once we have attached the hitboxes, Flame Engine checks for intersection between all the hitboxes of all the components. And if one or more intersection points are found between two hitboxes, the corresponding components are notified about the collision. There are few more things to know about Flame's collision detection, which you can read about on their official documentation. In our case, the components that can collide with each other are bullet, enemy and player. I'll start with the bullet component first. Here, to be able to add a hitbox and get notifications about collisions, we'll have to add the hitbox and collidable mixin to this class. Once that is done, I'll override the onMount method. And in this method, I'll create a new circular hitbox called shape. And to attach it to current component, we'll have to use the addShape method. You can see that this hitbox circle does not need a size. This is because by default, it automatically creates a circle big enough to fill the smallest side of this component. Then next, to get notifications about collisions, I'll override the onCollision method. This method gets called for every collision between current component and any other collidable component. And as an input, we'll also get the intersection points and the other colliding entity. So in here, I'll check if other entity is of type enemy. And if this is true, we can mark the current bullet to get removed from the game world. This is all that we need in bullet class to detect collisions with enemies. Next, I'll do exactly the same things for enemy component. The only difference is that in the onCollision method, I'll have to check if other entity is of type bullet. And if this is true, I'll mark the current enemy to get removed. So ideally, with this much changes, the collision detection should have worked. But the only problem in our case is that all the enemies are currently being added to the enemy manager component. And for the collision detection to work properly, all the collidables must be direct child of main game instance. This means in the spawn enemy method of enemy manager class, we'll have to replace this add child call with refgame.addenemy. This will make sure that all the enemies are direct child of game instance. Then next, Let's make the player component a collidable too. And for now, in the onCollision method of player, I'll just check for enemy collisions and print something in the debug console. This completes the setup on the component side. Next, 
To let the main game instance know that it has to handle collision detection, we'll have to add the has collidables mixin to our game class. And that is it. Our game class should now be able to automatically detect collisions between bullet, enemy and player. So to test this, I'll first comment out the whole update method from this game class. And now let's build and run this code. As you can see, we are still able to fire bullets as before. And both the colliding entities get removed once they hit each other. So to just visually show you what is going on behind the scenes, I'll display all the hitboxes in the game. Let's start with player class. Here, I'll override the render method. And inside this render method, I'll call render shapes. Render shapes is a handy method which draws all the hitboxes attached to current component. So if I save this code, you can see that a circle appears around the player sprite. This is the hitbox which Flame uses to detect intersections between other hitboxes. So let's quickly copy the same code in bullet and enemy class as well. Now you can see all the hitboxes. You might have noticed that hitboxes for all the sprites are bigger than the sprite itself. So if you want to reduce the size of hitbox, you can provide a relation between size of hitbox and the size of component. For example, in hitbox circle, you can provide a definition property to define relation between radius of hit circle and size of the component. So if I set it to 0.5, it will set radius as half the smallest dimension of component. And in the game, you can see that the size of circle has become very small. 0.8 seems to be a good value for enemy sprite. Next, for the bullet, I'll set the definition as 0.5. And the hit circle still looks a little bigger. I think 0.5 will be a better value. Similarly, for player, I'll set definition as 0.8. Okay, these values look good for now. But if needed, we can change them later. So let's remove the temporary render method from all the three classes. Let's also remove the commented update method from our game class. So there is one more thing that I want to re-implement and that is the code that we wrote for virtual joystick. This is because the current implementation is good for just controlling the spaceship. But if we try to fire and control at the same time, it becomes useless. We can still try to make it work by adding more code. but that will just make the code more complex. So instead of using our own joystick, I think it will be much better if we use the default joystick component from Flame Engine. So in the onload method of this game class, after adding the enemy manager, I'll create a new joystick component. This component needs a reference to the parent game instance. In this case, this will be this. And after we get the joystick object, let's add it to the components list. Now this will just create a very basic joystick in the game. But you can always control how it looks by changing some of its optional properties. For example, to control how the knob and the background of joystick looks, we can specify the directional property. This needs an object of joystick directional class. And in here you have many options. For now, I'll just set the size to 100 because the default size looks too small. Next, let's specify the actions property. This is the main reason why I want to use this component. Basically, using actions, we can create additional buttons along with the virtual joystick. So I'll be creating a separate button to allow players to fire bullets. Actions needs a list of joystick action. So I'll create a list with one joystick action. Each joystick action needs an action ID. And this ID should be unique for each joystick action because later on this will help us to identify which button was pressed. As we need only a single button for now, I'll set the ID to 0. Let's also set the size to 60. So once our joystick component is ready, we can add listeners to this component. This can be done using the add observer method. So whenever the state of joystick changes, all the listeners will be notified. As we want to control the movement of player using this joystick, I'll add player as a listener here. Now this is showing an error because player class does not implement the joystick listener interface. So to do this, let's go to player.dat file. Here I'll add one more mixin to player class called joystick listener. Joystick listener is an abstract class which forces us to write two methods. First one is joystick action and other one is joystick change directional. And from their names, you can guess which one does what. So all the events from joystick buttons will be passed down to joystick action method. 
and all the events from virtual joystick will be passed down to the joystick change directional method. So in joystick action, I'll first check if event.id is 0. This is the same ID that we specified for the fire button. And as there are multiple states in which the action button can be, I'll check if event.event .event is action event.down. When both these conditions are true, we want to fire a new bullet. We already have this code in on tap down method of our game class. I'll just copy that code here. This code needs a reference to the sprite sheet. Also, this line will become this dot position because we are already in the player component. So to get a reference to the sprite sheet object, we need a reference to the parent game instance. For this, I'll add the has game ref mixin to our player class with its type set to space escape game. Next, in the space escape game class, let's rename and remove this underscore from sprite sheet field so that it becomes public. And now in the player class, we can access the sprite sheet from game ref. Similarly, to add the new bullet to game world, I'll write game ref dot add bullet. Then next in the joystick change directional method, we'll have to check the state of knob of joystick to decide the movement of player. So if you check the definition of joystick directional event, you'll find a directional field of type joystick move directional. This is just an enum with 9 values, which means we can switch over these 9 values and change the move direction of player accordingly. So back in player.dart, I'll add a switch statement which will check value of event.directional. Let's quickly auto generate all the cases. And for every case, I'll set the appropriate vector to using this dot set move direction. While doing this, just keep in mind that positive x direction is from left to right and positive y direction is from top to bottom. Okay, this completes the listener side code for player. Now in the game class, I'll remove the pan detector and tap detector mixins as we don't need them now. Also for the joystick component to work, we'll have to add the hash draggable components mixin. Then next, I'll remove all the on pan and on tap methods from this class. This render method is also not needed because it just contains the code to draw the old joystick. And finally, I'll remove all these fields we had added for storing data related to old joystick. Let's also make this player field private as it is not accessed from outside the game class. Now let's build and run this game to see if this works. And as you can see, now we have the virtual joystick on the left and a button on the right. The joystick is working pretty much similar to our original implementation. And if I press the fire button, bullets are being spawned just as before. Right now, this fire button is sticking to the edges. I'll quickly set the margin property of joystick action to edge inset all with a value of 30. Now let's do a hot restart to see the changes. Seems a little better now. So in this way, we have now improved the joystick to allow players to control the spaceship and fire bullets at the same time. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate this on an emulator, but if you want, you can go to the Play Store page of this game and test it for yourself. Link is in the description. So that was it for this video. I hope you liked it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.